Okay, we're going to quickly finish this thing. Replace this and see if we can't get this thing to play a CD again. Just remove these two screws here. The tray is going to be the trickiest part, the drawer. I perhaps will just take the whole um, mechanism out of here. I'll just keep taking screws out until I get some place. Okay, I decided to just take the four mounting screws out of the assembly and leave the tray and drawer as it is. And uh, we'll compare our new to our old here. And it's a pretty, pretty good match. So, on we go with the shock mounts and uh, continue on. Okay, I uh, cut the glue off this connector with an X-Acto blade, just cut the, the glue to free that. We managed to get the four screws out of the mounts without breaking any of the mounts there, the studs, and uh, I transferred the cable to the new one. And we'll continue on, we'll move the shock mounts over and get it back together. Okay, I've moved the rubber grommets over, and I've also used these rubber grommets from uh, donor CD-ROMs to, uh, sometimes you can use them as motor mounts for the phonographs, uh, motor mounts and whatnot. But anyhow, in a previous video I was uh, mentioning that the, the replacement does not say Sony on it, as the original one did. And I was just comparing the, the quality here between the two, and I, I notice here in the plastic, Ooh, Sony. Okay, another thing I meant, forgot to mention that you want to check on these replacement parts is that your spindle height is the same, and I did match these up, and they are the same. Sometimes the motor lengths vary. You can have the same motor part number, but the shaft lengths are different. In this case, it's the same because it is the replacement part. Um, these, these manufacturers love all this stuff. This. The little spacers and, and there's nothing over here, little fiber washer spacers and wedges and shims and stuff, which drives me up a wall, but I'll put that back. Okay, here we are with our new assembly all put back together and hopefully it's not in vain. Hopefully it works. Okay, I left the turntable out for the moment. I've checked my connections and I've resoldered the uh, AC blue and blue there. Let me turn it on. Radio. I mean, I mean, I would love to hear from someone who would hear this. CD. Let's see if it opens. It does, and we'll take a, a stamped disc. Let's see how it does. If it reads table of contents, Did not sound like it read the table of contents there. Trying. You may have another problem with this. Come on. Play. Yeah, nope. Same disease. Another thing about these cheesy construction habits, they had a red wire here that we missed. It was just dangling over here by one of these transistors, but it actually, I marked the board. It goes right, it's tacked on right to that resistor right there. We'll put that back and see what happens. Okay, basically I've uh, had no success getting this thing going again and I started to look at a few things. Uh, this board here, there's basically not a lot to it. That's your motor driver, 4 output motor driver chip. 
and this is the this is the chip that runs the show here. Let me get some focus here. And it's usually Toshiba's and whatnot. And this is like a little buffer. I not exactly sure, but that's the CD pickup side of things. Over here is the motor, uh, tray motor, spindle motor, and the uh, slider motor. That's the um, this is the the two uh, LED eight segment display. And these are your control buttons here. But why doesn't it work? Well, I was researching. Our replacement is in here, and our original is here. And I was looking at instructions from uh, not where I had purchased it, but you must desolder this connection for anti static. They short the pins during shipping. So sure enough, these pins are still shorted there, and on our original they are open. So we're going to try that. Well, that seems to be the problem. A little bit of over troubleshooting here. I powered it up. You can see, I don't know if you can see it, there is a 12 on the display in there. don't know, I doubt you can see that. There's a 12 on that display in there. Now I will demonstrate the AC connection here. Check this out. Because I can't reach around and get to the control panel. That's my like power. I can't really hit the play button. I'll get it out and give it a try. But it reads the table of contents, so I'm pretty pleased with that. Okay, here we are once again, all put back together. Got my tacky red lead soldered on there. The audio output, the AC, the uh, control panel buttons, and the seven segment uh, display there. So and the ribbon cable from the laser head. So it looks like, uh, let's flip it around and put a disc in and see what happens. Okay, if that d drive can see this CD with, uh, I think this was on the floor of the, the truck I bought, and it's a CDR. Let's put in the, um, let's put in the disc that came with this, that was stuck in this. The reason I repaired this is I was upset because uh, the gentleman said, oh yeah, it works fine, and of course, the, of course the CD doesn't work. Now I may have to fuss with the, the spacers and everything because it does scrape I think when it loads. I've, uh, I have the door right here I'm going to uh, I'll put back on. That just slides back in but uh, oh, I don't think I have the speakers attached. Hold one second. Okay our two speaker leads are, are attached. I'll turn this thing on. I'm not worried about the scraping. Reads the table of contents. It will press. Now, it's because it's scraping. I have to fuss with this tray a little bit. I'm just holding the tray so it doesn't scrape like that. So there you have it, the repair of the classic dirty volume control. Piece of crap. Crosley look alike. We'll clean the volume control and be done with it. It's not scraping now either. Uh, 
I have to look into that. We'll fuss with that a little bit. Causes the skipping at the beginning. As you go in, it doesn't scrape. Not too worried about that. That's just the drawer plastic. That's why they have those those wafers in there and everything, these little spacers and that to keep it from scraping. So there you have it. A working player. Okay, seldom like to Mickey Mouse things and this thing being Mickey Mouse from the start here is uh I've noticed on the scraping on track one they have these little bumpers here on each side. I've just put a couple layers of tape over them. I think they were worn in, grooves worn in them because of open and closing so many times. So I just bumped them up a few thousandths of an inch with some electrical tape. And I can pad it a little more if I need or I could mess with spacers. But when you put it in, it doesn't scrape. Fix the volume control in a minute. You go to my head and you linger like a haunting refrain. And the door is back on. So that will do it. For the repair of the classic AM FM phonograph will be reattached. This thing right here, which is very minimal, this just goes and screws in like that. And we'll have our record changer, put the top back on, and uh, we're through with this. Getting off the bench. This thing better not eat my boxcar willy tape. Just for fun, let's see what this comes in on in uh, stylish pressure. I'll guarantee you it's in the red. comes in at a whopping six grams okay this has finished that whole CD with no skips no errors so I'm calling this done and as most of you know the thing that's holding me up is I can't find the back it's here somewhere I've searched high and low And I have everything else, but the back, I know I have, I remember keeping it. It's just, where is the darn thing? <laughs>